For users who don't have Project installed on their computer, you can export the data from Project into Excel if they have the Excel program. So to go ahead and do this, come up here and click on the File tab, go down to Save As, and let me come over here in the navigation pane and select Desktop. We'll save it there. And then we want to save it not as Project, but as an Excel file. You can do it in the latest version, which has the extra X in the extension. If you don't know anything about extensions, you can watch my uh, Windows training video on extensions, but that extra X means that that file is going to be more stable, and it's going to have a smaller file size, as opposed to an earlier version of Excel. Let's go ahead and save it to the latest here. Even though it doesn't say 2007 2010, if it doesn't say it, then assume that it is 2007 and 2010. So let's go ahead and select that, and then we can change the name and call it something spiffy in any case. Let's go ahead and click Save. opens up the Export Wizard where it's going to ask us a bunch of questions. We give it answers based upon those answers is what we're going to export. Let's go ahead and click Next. And then what is the format of data you want to export? We'll uh, choose the data, selected data, click Next. And then do we want to do a new map where we say, OK, these are the fields you want to export from Project into Excel or use something that Project has set up that, well, we'll look at that in just a minute. Let's do it in our own custom way here and select Next. And let's say it's going to be Resources. And then down below for the Excel options, Export includes headers. You want that. And the reason why is because when you get a bunch of data, if you don't have headers, chances are you're not going to know what that data is. Like if you have three columns of data, Without the headers or the labels for those columns, you're going to be going, OK, is this the baseline cost? Is that the actual cost? What are these uh, columns of data for? So be sure to include these headers for these columns, as you see them in project, like the task name is for the data in the task name column, and so on. Let's go ahead and select Next. And then the destination worksheet in the workbook, you can leave it as resource underscore table 1, or we can say resource backspace. Let's see, resources. And then for the fields from Project that we want to export to Excel, let's go ahead and click here and select a field from Project. Let's type in the letter N for name, because we want the name of the resources. And you can see down in the preview window, there's the resources names. And from Project, it's going to be the name field into Excel with the field also called name. Okay. And you can see here from name to name field. Let's go ahead and go below that and say that we want, let's type in C-O-S, there we go, cost. Let's go ahead and select that. So you can see that it's going to be from the cost name field in project to the cost name field or export the data into a field called cost in Excel. You can see it down below. OK. And we'll keep it simple. Click Next. And then we can save that. So next time we don't have to go ahead and set this up and say, OK, I want these fields from project to be exported to Excel. So we can click on Save Map. And we can call it my, my spiffed out resource costs or costs. There we go. And then go ahead and click Save, click Finish. It should be on the desktop. Let's come up here and minimize this down to the taskbar. And there we go. Something spiffy. Double click. And it's got the resources, their names, and their cost. Now, if you didn't have the uh, headers, then this wouldn't be there or that. The name of the fields from Project, as you recall, we left the default check saying that we want to go ahead and include headers for our columns here for the data. I mean, you could guess pretty much like, OK, this column, let's see. I bet those are resources. But without the header for this, you could go, hmm, what is that field? Actual cost, baseline cost, what is it? And then go ahead and freak out. So be sure to go ahead and include those uh, headers. Let's close out of that, go back to project here, and let's do it again. Let's come up here, click on the File tab, although with a twist here. So don't stop the video yet. Let's click Save As, and let's do the Desktop. And we'll change this again to Excel. Let's see, Spiffy, we could call this like Spiffy to since it's our second export, and click Save. Opens up the Export Wizard, click Next. Selected Data, click Next. And as you recall, we save this. So we can go ahead and select Use Existing Map, click Next. And we saved it as My Spiffed Out Resource Costs. Probably would have been better to have it as Export, because when I look at that, is that supposed to be an import or an export? I mean, hey, that spells it out right there. Task Export Table Map, OK. In any case, you get the idea. So I can go ahead and select that, my spiffed out uh, resource costs, and click Next. You can see it saved my settings here and the fields, and I can you know, click Finish. Let's go back. Instead of doing that, let's go ahead and select something else, because these are the other ones that you'll have in Project by default that Project thinks might be helpful, so you don't have to set this up, like the cost data by task export. Let's go ahead and select that and take a look at that, and click Next. 
See, we're going to be exporting task with headers or labels for those fields, which is always nice. Go ahead and click next. And then we've got the name of the worksheet, task underscore cost. So when we open up the workbook, well, like I said, that's the name of the worksheet. We can go ahead and leave it as is. We can change anything that we want here. We can go ahead and delete a row if we don't like it, but we'll leave it as is. You can see down below that we've got, let's see, ID active, which means that is the task and project going to be worked on? Because if it's not active, that means you can still have the task in there as a reference, but it's not going to be worked on, okay? So let's see, task mode, auto scheduled, name, fixed cost, cost, baseline cost. Oh, that's fancy. Let's go ahead and click next and then click finish. So it exports to the desktop. Let's go ahead and minimize this down to the uh, task bar so we can see it. And it's spiffy too. Oh, that's nice. Double click on that. We've got the row headers or the labels for each columns in the uh, header row. You'll learn this if you watch my Excel training videos that the first row in Excel is known as the header row. It's where you go ahead and you put in the headings for your columns, hence header row. And we've got, let's see, everything's active, so they're all being worked on. Uh, the task mode, auto scheduled. In any case, you can see everything there, the cost. Okay, cool. And then as a side note, is that when you export that, if you're trying to figure out in project the comparable of what you exported, like it had task and it had cost, well, you can come over here and right click on the view bar and go down to more views. And the view was the uh, task sheet. Let's go ahead and scroll down, task sheet, and click apply. And the table within the uh, view here of the task sheet, let me right click on the header cell for the table and right click on it. You can see its entry, you want to go to cost. And as you recall, is what we just exported, it had the task name, the cost, let's see also the baseline cost, variance cost, pretty much everything that you see here except for one that I can think of is the active field to let you know if that task is going to be worked on or not. And you can, of course, always right click on a column to insert a field if you don't see it and select active. And there you go. Do you want this task to be worked on? Like, let's click below, start the manual. No, puts a line through it and says, hmm, we're not going to start it. Okay. Well, we do want to start it. So voila, let's go back to yes. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel to get notified of the latest videos. And for great specials on my products, please see the description below this video.